<laughs> hey guys, welcome to episode 18 of The End of Everything, a podcast where we do something different every week. <laughs> yep. This week we're going to do a little bit of a tech news overview. So we've uh, yeah, basically looked at some of the latest news and we're just going to reformat it straight to you. <laughs> talk, talk about how we feel about it. Yeah. Where we see it going. Our feelings and emotions towards this technology. Yeah. How it resonates with us. Yeah, yeah. All the exciting stuff. <laughs> so, the first news um, is mm. in relation to our favourite person. Oh, please, say his name. <laughs> Lord Musk. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. For anyone who didn't catch that. Yeah. Uh, so, last week they um, launched a whole bunch of satellites like 60 satellites inside of one um, rocket mm. and basically their plan is to make like a global um, internet service which is provided from space by the, by an array of satellites so there needs to be 12,000 satellites in total to look, create the kind of web of satellites that will then beam internet down to people on earth and you receive the internet through a pizza box sized dish is what they're calling it. Like a sky dish. Sort of kind of like a sky dish, but for internet. So the idea is that you can get high speed internet to sort of anywhere in the world. I mean, this is crazy, isn't it? Because I mean, this is like some real sci-fi sort of stuff, like mm. a network of connected satellites. That... You know what it reminds me of? What? Geostorm. <laughs> One of the greatest movies of our time. Yes. Everyone, That's not, probably where Elon got the idea. If people haven't seen Joe Storm, they need to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like the fact that you, you're sending up, what, th- thousands? How many is yeah, it? Yeah, so apparently 12. I think it can be like um, operational in areas because of their yeah. uh, orbits around the Earth. Like you can obviously, if you cover a band where most of the people live, yeah, then like you don't right. need a whole. You know, as many satellites. You don't need a bunch around the Pacific Ocean or whatever. Yeah, yeah. well, not really the Pacific Ocean. It's more because obviously, if the, if you got something going around the Earth, yeah, it kind of has to go over the Pacific Ocean. Sure. It's fucking massive. It's more like the poles. Yeah, yeah. So you have like orbits around. Of course, cause... you don't need anyone around that rotation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I gotcha. Because um, I don't know. Most people live near the equator, basically. Yeah, population wise. Sure. Um. So yeah, they, I think they were saying that you know within four thousand satellites you can kind of have limited um, connectivity, mm. but they're hoping to yeah get twelve thousand as like the fully fledged thing, and then after that they want to do another third. They've applied for a grant for thirty thousand more, so it's like a lot. And it, to give a bit of context, like there's apparently about fourteen, fourteen to fifteen thousand large objects or, orbiting Earth currently. So twelve thousand is significant in it's, terms it's, of it's nearly doubling what's up there. Yeah, and I think like it's interesting to think you know, and surely some of these things have to collide at some point, right? Yeah. So there's a bit of a issue with, especially in early in space flight, people didn't think about it, you know, deorbiting things. So mm. when you launch rockets like in the space race, they just launched and then they just were floating around and they yeah. are just floating around still and um so now they're more strict and basically when you put something up you have to have a plan as to how it's going to deorbit mm. so that you're not adding to the space trash but you know there's still a lot of a lot more satellites and there's still a lot, already a lot of trash up there and basically when it, things collide in space you can get a kind of runaway effect mm. as things explode more and more and more you just kind of cover the earth in a ball of yeah junk so what you're saying is is that it's basically another case of millennials cleaning up baby boomers trash. Is that, is that kind of what you're getting at? Or? I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, so that's what apart from it's very hard to clean up. <laughs> so it's more like just being burdened with it. But in saying that, 12,000 sounds like a big number. And for mm-hmm. you know, but space is big. Right. <laughs> is it? Okay. Okay. You know... Well, you know, because um, they're saying that astronomers are going to have a lot of issues with this, saying it's going to block out the night sky and, yeah. you know, um, affect with yeah their view of the night sky. Yeah. Which is possible, but I... I mean, we're not export astronomers, so I mean, I don't know how... I speak for yourself. <laughs> speak for yourself. I don't know if we, we're that capable, but... It's, it's massive, though. 12,000 yeah. over their middle space. But I guess, like, from what you can see... Yeah, looking up at the sky, you would be able to see thousands and thousands of clouds. I mean, yeah, enough people have looked 
you can see things like the International Space Station and large satellites. You mm. you know, if you look at the sky, it's pretty easy to see them. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, Elon Musk has already like made comments where, because basically it's like reflection, you know, it's, something, it's the sun reflecting against it and it catching the light and being bright. Yeah. So obviously it's not as bright as a star, but it's a fuck lot closer than a star. <laughs> And um, that's why you see it as a prick, a prick of light. Yeah. So, you know, there's solutions like even having the backside black. Yeah, sure. It can affect it. And the thing, yeah, people should go watch it. But when you, when they launch, obviously they're, they're basically coming out of the, the rocket and it's just a stream of satellites at the back because, and then they use thrusters to align themselves to all the individual orbits. Mm -hmm. So, and also raise their orbit to be further away from Earth. But when they, just after they launch, it, it literally just looks like a, a, like a streak across the sky and it is pretty like jarring. You're like, that's weird. If I was an astronomer, I would be annoyed by that. Yeah. But I think people, basically we just have to wait and see like when they get to their proper orbit, like how bad it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it can kind of look quite shocking. But yeah, I think, I think there's, people are right to be cautious about it really, you know? Yeah, I... <sighs> I mean, yeah, you have no idea. I mean, it sounds like it's a dangerous thing. It's like, oh, don't put more stuff up there, but it's, you just have no idea. But I suppose it is the thing as well as like, you know, it's not like you're polluting your county or your country. or It's like you're putting something in space and that is everyone's space. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I find it amazing that it's actually only the US government who tracks this stuff. Yeah. I mean, like that, how have they taken it as their responsibility? It's well, like, I, mean, I mean, I know they, why. They, yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're sort of the major... Um, yeah. spacefaring country, you know, whatever. But yeah. it's it's um, it is international space, I suppose. So it's, yeah. it's kind of bizarre that no one else. Yeah, because actually, quite recently, it. like I think India launched a satellite, and they were used. They were, they were testing their like missiles to take down satellites, basically. Yeah. So I think they like shot one down, and um, you know, it created a whole bunch of space trash. But like. It's going to deorbit over months or whatever, but, mm. you know, Manassas, like, was annoyed at them because it's their job to then track all that trash that another country has purposely done, used yeah. to, like, test their weapons. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it is, there's definitely, like, a, it's a new world, like, mm. how you create legislations and boundaries and rules for space. Yes. Yeah. It's just, yeah, works on a different level. So yeah. why, why is Elon doing this? Why is he... Uh, I mean, this is just another, it sounds like another crazy Elon scheme. And they're, okay, I'm going to yeah, change a world from using fossil fuel cars to electric cars. I'm going to get us to space. And now he wants to give internet to the whole world. Like, mm -hmm. is this, what's his reasoning behind that? Yeah, I mean, I think the first part of the positive of it is that, you know, we we so take for granted our access to information. Mm. You know, and there's like that, people talk about the information disparity. So, I mean, Facebook have done, had similar ideas to give internet to more people. I mean, from Facebook's point of view, so more people can join Facebook. Sure. But um, from Elon's point of view, it's to generate money, basically, so he can continue doing his, getting to Mars, getting to, you know, yep. all these, you know, develop, developing all these things that he wants to do. So. Sure. And obviously, communication companies are some of the you know, biggest companies and most mm -hmm. lucrative companies in the world. So, I guess he wants a bit of that pie. Yeah, so um, it's not move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, don't really know how I feel about it. I mean, it's all it's all good for us to be like, you know, because apparently it's not really going to increase the speed of internet for developed areas. Like mm. fiber optics are better. Yeah. Um, but you can't lay fiber optics to you know Darfield or wherever. No, you can't. You know, <laughs> yeah. or the middle. I don't know the middle of Africa or wherever. Sure. sure. So um, you know, I think it's kind of. Yeah, I, I see the I see that there could be benefits for people. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that kind of leads us on nicely into uh, what we're seeing at the moment with a lot of these large tech companies such as Facebook and Google and stuff and just how big some of these communication companies are becoming. Mm. Um, or tech companies. These even, tech yeah. companies, yeah. Because, um, uh, you know, in the news we've seen recently a couple of, um, I guess, I guess smaller tech companies being taken over by the large conglomerates. I mean, I suppose it's the, the tech companies in us, you know, uh, Adobe, visualization companies or art, like creative sure. companies. So Adobe has been buying a lot of, well, has recently bought Substance Material mm -hmm. Maker, which is a, 
don't really have enough have in depth and want to go with it, but you basically a, a way to create materials easily for visual effects artists, yeah. I guess is the best way to put it. So Adobe purchased that and people were upset about it. Yeah. So it, it's basically I mean it's happening in all sectors, I'm sure it's happening in um uh like sort of communication CRM sort of areas and stuff as well. But like you've always just got your your major um your major companies such as Adobe who are, you know, did Photoshop and Illustrator, Illustrator. you know, they are um, becoming one of the large conglomerates in the um, creative software sector. Yeah. Um, and yeah, rapidly sort of um, accumulating things like AR technology, Substance Painter, um, and becoming a... This yeah, it's like the, if you want to be a creative person in the world, you need to work with Adobe. They've got a monopoly over that, really. Yeah. Yeah. And also, Autodesk is another example of that, yep. which owns a lot of the 3D software out there. And it becomes, like, to the point where it actually becomes a little bit of a business plan for some of these companies to create a really good or useful tool within the creative software and to get bought out by yep. Autodesk. So... Yeah. They just create something that's really useful and Autodesk comes along and just says, yep, we'll have that. Yeah. Um, and what you end up doing is just having a well, big subscription. Corporate, corporatization and yep. then lack of competitive marketplace. And yep. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, yeah, again, it's one of those things like Google is, you know, mm. great in the way that it's free, quotation marks. Um, yeah. And you get access to these amazing services, which would, if you were paying for individually, would cost a lot of money. Um but I actually saw just the other day, I think yesterday, that they think they're planning of having a Google Bank next year. So they're going to have... So, yeah, I don't know how that's going to... I mean, it could be amazing again. It could be like a, an international bank, which you can just yeah. use anywhere and anyone can access. Oh, that could be kind of great. But it's... Uh, but again, it's, it's crazy, just like isn't it? more money for Google, more data, everything, yeah. control of your life. And it, it's... Um, I mean, it's worth mentioning, like we... So we're using all sorts of software at the moment. We're using Google um, that controls our sort of email, email and uh, gives us a lot of um, extra stuff alongside that as far as um, hosting little websites and PowerPoint. And it's just basically your Documents. Microsoft Office suite yeah. for free. Also um, business like... Um search engine optimization, like business profile, like Google mm. Business... Um, YouTube obviously is owned by Google um, or Alphabet, and it's but like for a small business like us, it is so great. Yeah, it's amazing. Like it, it has helped us so much because it's like all of a sudden, I mean, our data is so much cheaper to us than real money at the moment. It's like oh, we'll happily you know give whatever yeah. we're giving, but because like I'm definitely going to pick the free option over all of these companies who do a similar thing that costs you know, however much per month or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in a lot of, yeah, like you say, in a lot of ways, it's a great time. Like, it is a great time to be creative now because all mm. these tools are available and it's a great time to be an entrepreneur or a business owner, really, because, yeah, there's an extra level of complexity, but your ability to put things out there is mm. so much amplified to what it used to be. And I think uh, one of the examples the other day was, um, I mean, just to show how, like, sort of scary Google can can be for... Um, its competitors is um, Google just Google just recently came out with its own sky scanner or um, Google flights yeah I mean I think they've been developing it for, uh, for a while but yeah, you're right. yeah they've definitely come to a point with it where, where you know you can type it into Google and it can find you the cheapest flight and it's yeah. like how many companies does that happen to and like ru ruin you yeah. know like um, imagine being like sky scanner webjet whatever they are and all of a sudden, you have to compete with Google, like the largest, one of the largest companies in the, the world. world. Yeah, the most profitable, I think. Well, actually, yeah. I think I heard that they had the big, the largest cash reserves of any company in the world, more than Apple. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, I mean, there's an example about um, Amazon and the diaper thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there were, Amazon wanted to buy this company in America which made nappies, or like children's diapers, and they were the, they had. 80% market share and they were completely dominating their space. It was like diapers.com or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And Amazon were like, we want to buy you. Um, they declined. So then Amazon just started selling diapers at a loss 
for as long as it yeah, took. Just making it super, super cheap to buy diapers. Naturally, everyone went to Everyone Amazon. bought diapers. You know, a year later, two years later, they go back and um, acquire them for a tenth the cost or something yeah, like that. Because Douglas just, 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 just lost all their business and yeah. they had to sell it to Amazon for a year, like a tenth of the price. Yeah, and that... Yeah, it's... It's kind yeah, of scary when the company scary. has that power. Yeah, and it's yeah. also scary when you're trying to start something. Mm. You know, I mean, not to say that we're going to be something which want to, you know, but it's where do you, yeah, do you develop these things knowing that you're competing against other people or do you just utilize what they're using but then you basically have no intellectual property really. You're just kind of like piggybacking on a, on a platform. I mean, I think YouTube is a, worth talking about. It's... it's as a YouTube creator, you are so reliant on YouTube and their rules and regulations and mm-hmm. everything that you really have no option other than abiding by those rules. And, mm-hmm. you know, what they call them like the ad apocalypse and all these sort of things where they were like making really good money and then Google just slash the amount of money that they get. And, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it, you know, you're not in a company where you can you know, talk to your manager or boss and be like, I'm going to pay your eyes. Like, is this going to be consistent? It's just like, this is the rules, play by it or fuck off. Yeah. And now, that, I mean, there's all sorts of regulations as far as, um, I mean, not that, you know, we want to put it, put hate speech out there or anything, but it, like there is certain <clears throat> um, censoring and all sorts of things. It's like, yeah, they, they do make the rule book. Yeah. And that's what happens is that, you know, these giant conglomerates, they can make the rule book. Yeah. Because um, it needs to be ad friendly and it's... And to be fair, like, I understand that as, I mean, I don't know if I do understand that. I guess I understand that, like, mm-hmm. you know, who's paying for YouTube to exist, you know, by proxy, uh, Coke or whatever. Sure. And um, Coke want to only put their name on things that they see as being appropriate. But, yeah, just as, I guess just in this strange space, really. Yeah. Like, and and because, they're, because of the amount of content that they are policing, like, they can only really use, like, blunt tools to do so. Mm. Like, the, the only rules they can establish a rules that basically a computer can yeah decipher whether or not you're mm. playing by those rules well I mean, another bit of news that just came out is that uh with the um the child what is it anti anti-child abuse um sort of content laws that have just come out in america youtube now have you uh, as a youtube creator you now have to um, label yourself as oh, yeah, my, all my stuff is child friendly or it's not mm. or certain videos are certain videos aren't um, and it's like there's no way a computer could do that no you know like it, it's relying on the content creators themselves and then employees to sift through all that information yeah. and deem it I mean know, I, I think to be fair to give um, I don't think Google or Facebook really are being nefarious about it's a really hard job. I mean, I oh, think... yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no... Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think there's, there's elements of being nefarious. I think the way that, you know, Facebook... Uh, or the, Whatever the rules are made on how they harvest data and how they tell you about your data and how that... I think that was a bit... Yeah, whatever. It's, it's a bit sleight of hand kind of thing. Sure. But I think... Uh, yeah. If you, yeah. There's no easy way to police thousands and thousands of hours of footage every single day. And the same with Twitter. And mm. the same with Facebook. All those rules apply... Uh, but it's clear that there's some that everyone's just like I don't know what to do. Like the government doesn't know what to do because they aren't either don't understand it or don't know how to make legislation for this new thing. The people who own this company have just like come up with an idea and now are like some of the most are the most powerful people in the world. Yeah, yeah. And like that was ten years ago. And like if you were in that situation, you're just like I don't know. Like what do you do? Yeah. No one knows. There's no rule book. You know. Yeah. So it's um it's really tricky. And there, there is no super villain at the top of Google no. and Facebook just trying to harvest data for data's sake yeah or like <laughs> manipulate people or yeah. you know yeah d- stop freedom of speech I think people aren't really trying to do that they're no, just trying no. you know they're just trying to not let people come on and start raving about whatever they want to rave about mm. or like yeah anyway <laughs> but yeah it's, it's, it's interesting times yeah and speaking of kind of uh, Facebook I suppose there's a there's a new player afoot oh yeah as far as um I know some of you guys might have heard about it, but TikTok. Yeah. It's uh, pretty big with the kids. <laughs> I think it's been around for a um, It has been around for a while, but... Um, so it just makes you sound real old. It's, it's definitely getting um, more popular. I wonder how many people do have at our age. Probably a few. Eh? We're probably just really... Probably. Lame. <laughs> I could never... Like, 
I mean, but it, it's exactly how that Instagram started, as it's just a you know, filter. Thing for the kids. Thing for, thing for the kids, and it's like, oh, this is kind of cool, this is like a novelty thing. Then people start using the platform for more and more stuff, it, and it becomes a you know, platform of its own, like Facebook or Instagram yeah. or things. So like, that's kind of what we're hearing a lot at the moment from like, uh, LinkedIn and like, sort of marketing advisors and stuff, is that TikTok's the ne- next big thing as far as uh, becoming an influencer yeah. on that, you know, get on TikTok. You know, so yeah. basically you and I have to start uh, miming you know, and dancing miming the and songs. Dancing music. I mean, we've done that a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. true. Actually, we probably can transition pretty quickly yeah. to TikTok. I actually don't think it'd be that hard. <laughs> oh my God. We could be <laughs> stop, the, stop the tape. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, but that, I mean, that's kind of interesting. Like all these social media just just comes in waves you know so it's uh i mean what they're saying they're saying at the moment that linkedin is the facebook of 2011 um in that uh from maybe from business i'm not maybe for business i'm not sure maybe maybe so but i think like as far as they're talking about organic reach so you know if you put something out of facebook if you put up like "Mm, this sandwich is good you know, people beyond your friends would see that because yeah. it would just be on a big sort of news feed that, you know, your your extended network yeah. would see. However, you know, it, that's impossible now on Facebook. If you put something out there, no one's going to see it apart from your directly connected friends. Yeah. So I mean, Yeah, I think, like you say, like Facebook is basically just a, a massive ad stream, you know, mm. intermittent, speckled with your friends' things. Yeah. But most of it is just stuff that people have paid to show you. Yeah, and um, LinkedIn doesn't have that. You know, there's elements of it, but it's it's not. Well, quite it as, will go that way. It will go thing. that way. I mean, hopefully not. That'd be nice. Hmm. <laughs> but it's owned by Facebook, so chances are. <laughs> I mean, Instagram as well is, you know, hmm. I think that the part not the party's over, but again, you need money to. to keep every it. every third thing on Instagram is an ad. Yes. So yeah, like yeah. three posts from your friends ad. Three posts to your friend's ad. It's like yeah. a lot of ads. Mm. And when I think that's what's good about... You know, I mean, YouTube's pretty bad as well, to be honest, actually. Like, every video you watch, you got an ad. Got an ad, yeah. or, or two. But you just use an ad blogger. <laughs> <laughs> Top tip. Nice. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, that's kind of interesting. But I was wondering if there's any news you learned about electric cars. Anything about that? Um, oh, actually, um, oh, back to Musky. <laughs> oh, okay, go on. Um, he's releasing his uh, Tesla pickup truck, or like doing an announcement about it on um, next week, I think, 21st of November. Tesla pickup truck. So they've got that Model S, which was the original, like the sedan, popular one, like big, fancy, mm-hmm. expensive car. Then they had their model, well, actually they had the Roadster first, which is the life, oh, but yeah. that was basically a converted Lotus. Then they had the model, yeah, model S, which was the first like ground up car, which really like was more mm. driven to success because yeah. everyone loved it. Model X was like the big kind of like SUV with the big gull wing things. Ah, uh, yeah, and yeah. And they opened all funny, a bit over the top, didn't do so well. I think they still make a lot of money. I mean, they, but they cost insane amounts of money. Right. Model um three is the most recent one they've released, which is just like kind of a cheaper, cheaper yeah. ha- uh, standard kind of sedan car. Mm. And it's doing really actually very well. Like it's outselling so many cars in America. Like wow. it's pretty impressive to s- s- see, you know, a lot of people bet against, you know, what, you know how like you can do that on the stock market. You basically buy, I don't, uh, I'm not going to do a good job of explaining it, but basically you're betting that the company is going to fail and you make money if the company fails. So mm. rather than buying a stock to increase in value, you kind of like sell the stock before it decreases the value or something like this. Yeah, right. I don't exactly understand how it works, but no idea. a lot of people bet against Tesla and it seems like they're doing quite well. But anyway, and then after that is the Model Y, which is kind of is a SUV crossover. So it's kind of like a slightly bigger version of the Model 3, I think, which is going to come out soon. And then mm-hmm. they're making this big pickup truck, kind of like Ford F-150 giant American style ute. And yeah. like, it almost said it's going to look like... um like a armored personnel carrier from the future <laughs> so he's such a <laughs> sci-fi nerd yeah like yeah. he just loves that stuff so he's like hyping the absolute shit out of it but i'm, I'm quite excited to see how it goes because another company called rivian has um 
their first car was basically a ute because mm. it, it suits electric vehicles suit utes actually quite well because they have great torque yeah. for like towing and being in, in off-road they that you have the rivian has four motors so one for each wheel, wheel which is also great because you have really um, great control over the torque and, and so mm. you can like do minor slip. adjustments between exactly. each yep. and then also um, because of the way the battery bank is on the floor mm. like you have a low center of gravity low center of gravity but also like a lot of room to put stuff like it's quite yeah. a good utility okay because like it's just like kind of like a skateboard so um the Rivian one has all these like kind of cool features in the front and all this stuff and um wow and also it can be quite heavy so you can put a lot of batteries in it and it can have quite good range and stuff yeah so I mean, and just, uh, I mean, that kind of reminds me about what you were saying the other day and that, and maybe some people are interested in, say, in hearing this, but Tesla have a zero marketing budget, don't they? Yeah. So that they put, they don't put any money towards marketing, advertising. Yeah. Well, they won't buy billboard boards or like TV ad campaigns and that sort of thing. I mm. mean, yeah, like you say, I mean, there is some, they have a website, you know, that's marketing. Sure. You know, they have sure. Instagram, whatever. So there is How some money spent, it, yeah. but it's not like the traditional model. Yeah, for sure. And, um, but yeah, I mean, and yet, and I mean, maybe that's why, I don't know. It's one, of, it is the largest and I'd arguably most sort of like a popular car brand at the moment. It's very, like, it's very it's in the now, in like the talked now. about. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, yeah, you know, you're right. It is interesting just how... I mean, we're talking about it. Yeah. That's kind of it, really, yeah. isn't it? And but it's it's become a, I mean, it's become a total status symbol. Yeah. You know, like oh, there's a Tesla. You know, that's, yeah. and I mean, the Model Three was is kind of notorious for being not that well made, right? Yeah, I mean, I think well, the, techno- the te- technology is very impressive because it's a Silicon Valley company. Great, um, you know, automation and yeah, uh, yeah. great power. The batteries are amazing, but the like actual construction of the car has a bit to be left to yeah, be desired. Like sort of part lines are a bit yeah. wonky and things like that. However, you know, that's mostly ignored by people who just love the status of yeah. having a model. So those early adopters, though. People yeah. are just like, yeah. I want this because it's cool and new and I'm an eco warrior. There's definitely a bit of that as well. Definitely some of that. Um, yeah. And, but actually, again, like speaking of like well-made cars, like Porsche are releasing their Taycan next I think it comes out next year which mm. there's also been a bit of like um, yeah. uh, r- almost like rutting of the stags almost you know what rivalry. I mean like rivalry and all must like oh my car's faster and like oh this is gonna be the this is the Tesla killer and all this sort of like shit but like, um, <laughs> yeah. that um, that Porsche looks really amazing yeah because it looks beautiful it looks it? so nice mm. and like I saw a review of it and like inside it's just like you know Porsche make fucking nice cars yeah and like as soon as they can yeah, yeah their batteries aren't quite as good like it doesn't quite have as good a range you know it's it's arguably faster who knows whatever it's the same speed yeah <laughs> negligible but it is going to be a way nicer car you guarantee it and, and I mean this is where the point we're at where we are comparing electric cars as supercars like um you know people are getting so excited about the performance of these electric cars yeah. like, i think that i mean you listen to the what's his name jeremy um, clarkson. jeremy clarkson just total petrol head hates anything yeah. electric and stuff like that like that was sort of five years ago and yeah. you know now we're sort of competing in the electric car market yeah you know? i mean i think that that argument's lost over in terms of like mm. um you know, electric cars are better, are better you know, yeah. better, uh, they're, they're faster, they're more efficient, they're, you know, in the long run, probably going to be actually cheaper to produce. Yeah. Um, but it took some, it took a lot of innovation and steps to get to that point, obviously. And like, I see Jeremy Tyson's this point, like five years ago, electric cars were pretty shit, apart from Tesla's. Yep. Um, you know, the Leaf, Nissan Leaf is still pretty sh- I mean, you know like goes like 100 kilometers it's like not that great you yeah, know yeah, like it's yeah. all right if you're just driving around town but you know i wouldn't get in this and leave no but um now like you, you, when there's like practical you know you, you, mechanic like taking carbon and mechanics sucks and like electric like you know if you don't know anything about an engine it's really fucking annoying yeah and um if the even just the thought of an electric car costing more but I have to service it less. Even that is like, yes, I want I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, I've got a slightly less powerful one and I've got an e-bike. Yeah. Um, but I love that about that compared to, you know, my Nissan Cube, great yeah. car. Um, but yeah, the fact that I don't have to worry about the servicing, that I know it's going to break down, I, 
I understand its component <laughs> tree motor yeah. there, two wheels there, cool. Yeah. If it gets popped, I'd fix that. Too fair, you probably wouldn't understand the component tree of a Tesla. <laughs> No, you wouldn't. No, you're right. It's a, it's a little bit more advanced than an yeah, e-bike. It's a, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll do, have to do some reading up on that. I mean, essentially, it's, like, it's essentially the same thing. Yeah, but yeah, I, get, <laughs> I guess that, yeah, the, the idea that you don't, uh, the bits don't wear down yeah. as much and it's... Um, it's only like, what, whatever, like four moving parts, you know, it's like the yeah. drive shaft and, you know, that's kind of it. It's like, cool, I'll just replace the battery. Yeah. You know, it's something I can get my head around, yeah. whereas a combustion engine... <clears throat> It's a bit out of my league. Yeah, and there's, there is. I think it'll be interesting to see how mechanics transition to electric car mechanics mm. because you know it's going to have to happen. Yeah, and it's like a, it's going to be a completely different skill set. Electricians all become basically electricians. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think yeah, like you say, like a mechanic isn't going to fix the electric motor. Probably, it's probably no. going to just replace the electric motor. But I think I'm not. I don't even know what like fluids a car, electric car actually has. I mean. I don't know, like cool. I think they have to be cooled the batteries, and I assume that's done with water. But I, don't, I actually don't know. But then water comes out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, because of hydrogen, right? So no, that's a hydrogen fuel cell. I don't know. What was it? Oh, no, I can't think of something else. Then. Yeah, what that comes out of an electric car. I just saw an ad recently where they're like, water just comes out. No, that's what they're doing. They're like feeding the exhaust into like a water pool saying like, ah, this water's still good enough to drink. <laughs> the like, car exhaust. Yeah. No, it's like, <laughs> like, it's like an ad on um, a flight. It's just like, oh, zero emissions. And it's just like, and yeah, I think they're feeding it into like a fish tank or something. And the fish is like, yeah, this is me. I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> that's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, that's where I got confused. You know. Um, yeah. So, anything else? Oh, is there any other more news? Can we summarize the world of tech news? Do I have it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. I was going to talk about um, off-planet resource utilization, but oh, oh, well, hey. crack the right <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole podcast on its own. <laughs> that is a pressing issue that's on everyone's tongues. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, episode nineteen. You know what yeah. it's about. <laughs> Tech news episode two. We're yeah. starting off with <laughs> off-world resource utilization. Oh. So I look forward to that one. Goodbye, listeners. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. We'll um, see you next time. Yeah. Right. Bye. Bye.